One, two, three, four, five. Lovely. Can you hear me? I think you can hear me. Okay, guys, this is Hugh Sweeney here. And I'm in this woodland here near where I live. This is a place called Renville Woods. Ren Renville Woods, uh, not Renville Woods. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit off the beaten track here. Trying something new today in terms of video. I've realized that this YouTube channel is just not getting enough uploads. And I said, what way can I ensure that I do regular videos without taking me ages to edit? And I said, you know what? If I go out and just do a little podcast type thing on my thoughts on a certain subject related to video production or creativity, you know, in regards to this channel, what this channel is all about. And I said, if I go out with my camera and go for a little walk, my brain will start working. I'll start thinking of ideas. I won't have to edit all these, you know, big fancy B-roll videos. And I can just start populating the YouTube channel with a series of videos. So I'm gonna start doing one a week at least, hopefully. I know I've promised videos before and not delivered. Really sorry about that, but um, I really wanna start uploading regularly. So, today's video is, oh, and another thing, with this type of video, I've noticed lately when I'm watching YouTube videos, very often I am, um, uh, this is really beautiful, but it's kind of wrecked from the storm we had lately. But I notice that very often when I'm watching YouTube videos, I may be working, I may be in the middle of doing something, and I very often watch the video, or very often use the video as kind of like a podcast. So you might be working on something and just listening. So that's what this video is all about. It's about listening. You know, you can be tidying up your room, or doing whatever you want and listening to me at the same time. So I'm not gonna be putting in like all this fancy B-roll and slick editing and all that. It's gonna be piece to camera and that's it. So I hope you enjoy this. So today's video is about weddings, wedding videography and why I chose um, not to go down that route and why I think if you are a videographer or if you're new to uh, video production, if you're calling yourself a cinematographer, like a lot of people seem to be doing, I don't know why, um, and you're, you're thinking of getting into video production and you're thinking of doing weddings because you might think they're lucrative and stuff, my advice would be a massive, big, huge, big, gigantic, big, no, don't do it. But that's only based on my style of video. Now I'm a full-time videographer shooting videos for companies and stuff and I, I've realized that weddings are not for me and I'll share with you why I say that. So I've broken it up into a few reasons and I've written them out here. Not that I actually need to use notes for this video but let me start off first by telling you um, the advantages. Uh, yes, I have my notes here and I'm going to refer to them. The advantages of shooting weddings. There are advantages of shooting weddings and it's a beautiful type of work if you enjoy it. I don't. But if you enjoy it, there's serious advantages to wedding videography such as going to really nice locations. You may be lucky enough to be asked to go to a wedding abroad. Um, you may be dealing with very wealthy people who have no problem paying you a lot of money if you're good enough. Um, you have also got an opportunity to get fantastic shots. Weddings are a good way of getting good cinematography. You could be, you know, over in Italy at a beautiful location and get some amazing drone shots and amazing gimbal shots and all that. Usually, like, some of the best shots I've seen are wedding shots. That doesn't mean that um, uh, I would cons consider it myself. I, I still wouldn't. So uh, anyway, yeah, look, it's not for, anyway, <laughs> it's not for me, but um, you know, there are advantages, but I'm here to talk about the disadvantages and, wh and why I don't do weddings and probably will never shoot a wedding again. Um, okay, the first one. Let me see, hold on, I need to get my notes again. Oh, I thought I dropped them. Ah, da, 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 da. This is a really nice area. It's opened up now, so I'm gonna have to adjust the aperture here on the camera. So I've got this ND filter at the front here. So if I just turn that, it should 
and I'm hoping I'm in focus, I think I am. We've got this big house in the background here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, hold on, bear with me, I'm just gonna fold these up. I'm not even gonna edit this out, this, this is all gonna be in the video, all this. Okay, now the first reason I think you shouldn't do weddings is there is a lot of people out there. Now I'm basing this on Ireland, okay, where I live. There's a lot of people there living here shooting weddings at a very low price. I, when I was doing my first wedding a few years ago, I checked uh, some internet forums here in Ireland and it was like a women's forum. And I could see their prices and I could see what women were discussing amongst each other about their upcoming weddings. And from what I saw, uh, a lot of them were paying about six or 700 euros for their wedding videogra uh, vid videography, their wedding video. So six or 700 euros for what is probably a 14 hour day and probably minimum a couple of days edit. I'll get to that soon about the editing. But it just seemed like a very small, um, very low budget, very little money for the amount of work. Now, there were different discussions on there and one woman, I remember her seeing like she said, oh, I'm actually paying. Okay, we've got a lot of exposure here. Okay, the sun is behind me now, so I have to walk to the side here. So she said, um, oh, I'm actually paying a thousand, but the videographer is doing, you know, he's given me all this extra stuff and he's gonna give me all the extra footage and video's gonna be like two hours long. Now a thousand euros uh, for the level of work that you would end up having to put into it is ridiculous. So my, my argument is, the business is cheapened. The first point is that it's a it's a low it's a low budget business. The business is cheapened. It's oversupplied by people doing it too cheap. Uh, same with other industries. Same with general video. Uh, I've done video. I I, did, I priced a video for a company before. A company that turns over about ten million, and I priced them about two grand for some video work, and they got a price from someone else for three hundred and fifty euros. Now, a company that turns over 15 million euro or 10 or 15 million euros a year that wants to get a video done should not be paying 350 euros. It's absolutely ridiculous that they would pay, that it would, it would, uh, what the fuck is going on with my camera? Sorry guys, sorry for cursing. It's ridiculous that they would pay so little. It's just, you have to think about these things, but um, with weddings, Reason number one, over-serviced and underpriced. okay? Lots of cheap operators, lots of chancers. Oh, fellas that, oh, it's mostly guys that video wedding, weddings, by the way, 98%, I'd say. Um, female photographers photograph weddings, but not, I've never seen or heard of a woman filming a wedding, but there probably is a few quite sexist of me to assume so. Now, so that is reason number one. The second reason is the stress involved in anything going wrong. You only have one chance to get the shot. You cannot go back and shoot it again. It's a gun and run style operation. And hence, therefore, thou shalt be an extremely stressful operation. You. Um, you might miss something very important. You might forget to press record on the fucking camera when they're bride and groom, uh, when the bride is getting out of the car. It might all be a rush rush and you might forget to record. Press record on your camera. Damn it, I'm getting warm now. Um, it's actually, the, uh, where I am now, the wind has calmed down and it's actually getting really warm. It's kind of a funny morning here, but um, it's absolutely, terrifyingly stressful as a result. I was doing a wedding a couple of years ago and looking at birds here and I was also doing a job for cement, uh, Ireland's largest cement factory and the cement factory we were filming explosions and I had to rent a camera, a slow motion camera and it was, I was really stressed thinking about the the cement factory job filming a massive explosion, like about six different cameras and 
I was really worried about doing it. As it turned out, the wedding that I did around the same time was 10 times more stressful. I'm not exaggerating. For me, anyway. So there's gonna be guys watching this and going, what's he talking about? I love doing weddings. I, I work with lovely people and simple. It's enough. Look, I'll get to that in a minute, okay? So, anyway, very stressful. If anything goes wrong, it's a gun and run style job. You don't have a second chance of getting the shot. You can't ring them up. You can't um, say, oh Jesus, can we do that again? Now I've, I've worked with engineer, precision engineering companies, medical companies and stuff where, you know, you might get some shots, but they might, you might ring them up and say, look, I wanna go back there and just shoot something again. And it's always so easy to do that. They're always so accommodating, but that won't happen for a wedding. You have one chance and then that adds to the stress. Okay, so that's another very big reason. Number two, uh, and also you might, what if something happened to your camera? What if you, you know, a card got corrupt? Uh, what if your audio, your, your audio device crashed when it was recording? That happened to me before, where I was recording a long interview and my Tascam actually damaged the file. I couldn't use the file and I had to use the audio from the fucking black magic cameras. It was absolutely ridiculous. And I had to, uh, I couldn't charge the client. I had to do it for free. So um, yeah, that's reason number, number two. Okay, if shit goes wrong. Reason number three, and this is very kind of, there's, there's advantages and disadvantages to this, but reason number three, and this is based on Ireland as well, okay, which probably is very similar to any other Catholic type weddings. Uh, you're second to the photographer. That has its advantages, I'll get to that in a second, but you're second to the photographer in that the photographer is directing everything and you might get in the way they will ask you to get out of the way and they will tell you um, not to get in the way a few times. That's happened to me. <laughs> Sorry, do, do you mind? You're, you're actually, I, uh, this is a wide angle shot. Do you mind moving a little bit? That's, that's happened to me a few times. So um, you feel a little bit less important and the photographer will think you're less important. And I suppose it's down to how much priority the client wants video or pho photographs. Some clients, some wedding people getting married actually just want video. Um, so that is a valid reason. You're actually under the watchful eye of a photographer. Now photographers may have a lot more experience than you and they might tell you, oh, why don't you get a video shot of that? Why don't you shoot the dress? The dress is in that room. Why don't you get some shots of that? And that's a great help, but it also makes you feel like a little bit inexperienced. And um, yeah, it's just, look, it's not something I personally like. Now, if the photographer is, uh, caught, you know, if they're directing, if they're bringing the bride and groom out on, onto a lovely place where they want photographs and they're setting up a shot, you can be getting beautiful shots of that. So there is an advantage of you can just literally work with the photographer without having to direct the um, clients, the bride and groom. You can just, you can just go, um, sorry guys, I'm just having to adjust this again because I'm going into a darker area. You, ha you can just go along with the photographer. So there is advantages there to that. Um, oh, do you hear those birds singing? It's beautiful here. This is absolutely gorgeous, but I'm very warm. So yeah, that is another reason, uh, working with a photographer. I was actually chatting to some photographers and they're booked out for 150 weddings. Can you imagine that, having 150 weddings to do over the period of about a year and a half, all booked in? My God, I would not like that. Okay, here's another uh, reason not to shoot weddings. It is a two-man job. To do a wedding properly it really is a two-man job. And a lot of wedding videographers are working on their own and um, you're trying to manage different cameras. You're trying to do a drone shot. You want to do a drone shot of the car arriving at the church or something. You want to do a drone shot of this and that. Um, so you're trying to manage a lot. You want to get to the church and have the audio set up so that the 
all, the mass is all recorded and you know all that stress all that worry trying to get it all going definitely a two-man job and then you have the the worry of if your partner if it is a two-man job if you've booked someone else to help you then you have the issue of you know what if anything happens then what if they ring you two days beforehand and they go listen man i'm screwed here i've got a bad dose bad flu and then you're like fuck i'm on my own so uh yeah that is another reason it's a two-man job okay number five this is a kind of a more specific one there are a lot of companies that appear to only do weddings or they have the lion's share of their work. Weddings are the lion's share of their work. In other words, companies that are doing it day in, day out. And uh, you very often you'll see these video companies with sort of slightly feminized names, <laughs> like, um, you know, dream catchers or something, you know, or, um, you know, uh, beauty, Beauty Vision, uh, just hypothetically naming uh, wedding videography companies. But what I'm saying is they have a kind of a slightly, their na the name of the company is geared towards what they're doing. And, and look, you know, more power to them. I'm not saying that they're, that they're not good or anything. I'm actually saying the opposite. If they're doing weddings day in, day out, these, these guys and girls um, will have it mastered. They will be so familiar with what to do and they're so used to it that they're not stressed at all. So you come along, you've only done one wedding for a friend of yours and all of a sudden you're doing a wedding for a big important client and you're shitting your pants and someone else has done like 200 weddings and you're up against them. So that is another reason why I don't think you should do weddings if you're getting into videography. I really don't. Um, now, where am I? So that is another reason. I think I'm up on reason number five now. The wind is coming through the trees here. It's quite nice. I think there's some nesting bird boxes up here somewhere. I'm not too sure. Okay. Let me see. I know I'm going dark again. I'm going in and out under the trees, you see. And it is dark. Um, now let's, here's another reason, right? Number, reason number six here, and this is the, probably one of the most important ones. It's extremely laborious filming a wedding. It's, it's extremely, I'll just break it down for you, right? Firstly, you have the initial, the initial um, contact with the client. You get booked, you have to go and meet them and show them samples and you have to discuss it with them. So you're, you're gonna lose a couple hours before the actual event at all. Then you have the day in itself. You usually will have a location that isn't uh, near you. Well, it might be, you know, it depends where you live, I suppose. You'll have to travel. You'll have to pack all the gear the night before. There's gonna be a lot of packing, a lot of organizing your gear, especially if you're doing proper wedding where you're doing a lot of audio and stuff. Um, you're gonna to have to get all that ready. Make sure you have batteries, make sure you have cards cleaned, wiped. Uh, make sure you have your ND filter. Imagine getting to a wedding and you forgot your variable ND filter. Do you know what I mean? Imagine that, because that happens to me all the time where I just forget so. Oh shit. See that now? I yanked out my earphones. <sighs> I yanked out my earphones and I... I of course dropped the little... Uh, I dropped this little earbud thing. Okay guys, I should really edit this out. I dropped the little rubber bungy thing on the end of the on the end of the earphones. I'm not used to filming with earphones in like this. Okay, we'll be back in operation soon. Where was I? Oh yeah, I was on about the length of time. The length of time it's involved. So you have you have to travel to the gig, right? You have to get all your stuff ready, yeah? And I was on about the ND filter. Imagine if you forget something small. You forget your variable ND filter. Meaning that you cannot get those depth of field shots with the correct shutter speed. It wouldn't that be very stressful? And I've got an ND filter on here. So 
So anyway, that's that. That is, uh, oh yeah, the time, okay. So you have extremely long, you have an extremely long day. You have, um, you might, you're gonna have to be there in the morning and you're probably not gonna finish until the morning again, as in like the late at night, like one in the morning or something. That's for a full wedding where they wanna get the last dance. And then when you get the last dance, it's kind of like, oh, do I head straight away? Or do you, do you get some other people dancing? You might want to get, like, why not just stay for another hour? And, you know, so you have a huge day. You have like 14, 16 hour day. And then you have the meetings before that, three, four hours. That's, you're up on 18 hours already. Two, that's over two days. And then you have the edit time. Editing a wedding video is, on average, I would say about 50 hours. Fucking hell, man. Feels like there's someone walking behind me. Uh, editing a wedding video is like 50 hours at least. Some people spend 60, 80 hours. You have to do a trailer for a lot of people. They want to see a, like a mixture of uh, shots packed into like, you know, 15 minutes. And then you have the video itself, which is going to be about two hours, including speeches and all that stuff. So it's a lot of editing. So by the time you add the editing time to your filming time, you're up on, you could be up on 70 hours. This is for like a proper job. You could be up on 70 hours labor, right? 70 hours is actually two weeks. That's two weeks uh, industrial work time, two weeks in a factory. I'm not exaggerating, you might say, um, yeah, come on, man. You might go two days edit. That's only three days, one day shooting. But if you add up the hours, you could easily spend 70 hours in total shooting a wedding. I'm not exaggerating. I'm gonna go down this place. I just have to adjust this fucking ND filter again. So the time involved is just um, ridiculous. Don't do it, man. Don't sell. Don't sell your soul. There's a, there's a there's a kind of a sell your soul mentality amongst videographers who end up doing weddings. I've noticed that. So that is, um, now let me see. Long ass day, that's reason number six. Um, I think I'm nearly there. Yeah, I'll just talk another little bit about, about it. Um, just to, to finish up, I kind of, I think that's kind of reason, reason number six. I'm just gonna check it again now here, one second. I just have some people passing. Have I got them all? Yeah, um, it's a lot of work. I was looking at, a guy sent me his video, his wedding video before, and he had a videographer do it that um, charged 1,000 euros and the video he did, the pre preliminary trailer, I looked at it, the, the video, not the full wedding video, the actual trailer, I would say it took two, uh, two days to edit. So you're getting a thousand euros for a 16 hour day on the day, two days to edit the trailer, two and a half, three days to edit the full uh, wedding video. You do the maths. You're on, you're on, you're actually, if you add up the hours, if you spend 70 hours doing a wedding, filming a wedding, and you, you're charging, we'll say, 1,400 euros, you're earning 20 euros per hour, which is not enough for a videographer who is managing expensive equipment and all that. Now, another thing I didn't mention there is, and I just said equipment, um, you could run the risk of, I, I noticed when I was doing a wedding before, um, I was very sort of, you know, in the heat of the moment, very angst, full of angst, full of anxiety, trying to get the shots. And I sort of compromised with my equipment. In other words, the back of my car was just a dumping ground for my equipment. I had like two or three cameras in there, just thrown in there with tripods. And when I left the church, it was like just snatching all the audio gear and just literally throwing it into the car with no, um, no thought, no, um, 
no thought put into it. Sorry, I'm just looking at someone there exercising. Uh, no thought put into it. No actual. Um, just just bang the gear into the car. Just throw it all in, and that's not good. You should always look after your gear. So that is kind of it, really. Don't. Uh, I I just as as the type of the type of videographer I am, uh, shooting videos for companies. I love working with factories engineering companies, aerospace companies. Company, oh yeah, here's another reason that I forgot to mention. This is the final, reason number eight. You're working for a job that doesn't earn the client money. In other words, I know that sounds a bit odd, but um, like some people will be able to afford um, to pay you well and all that. They'll have, they'll have the budget and it's a big deal and that's fine. But a lot of people are very cost conscious and they'll only want to pay you kind of the going rate uh, and all that, but it's it's a memory for them. It's not something that they uh, they earn money from. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like if you do a video for, we'll say a, a medical company, they've got a new product that you are shooting the video for the product is worth absolute millions to them in sales. You're doing the video. They're gonna use your video as the main marketing tool, the main uh, sales tool. They can afford to pay you thousands because this is, it's all pivoting on the video, whereas uh, like a wedding video, it's just a memory for people, okay? So you're never gonna be able to generate the sort of money from it that you would from industrial work like okay so anyway that is a few very valid reasons and I hope you enjoyed watching this video I'm just gonna cut across the grass here actually this way as I said look I wouldn't rule it out if I if I had a, a very wealthy person approach me and say look we love your work we want you to do our wedding it's over in uh, you know Sorrento or somewhere in Italy or somewhere fancy down to the south of France, Cannes or somewhere. We want to bring you with us. And I'd be like, oh, okay. And you know, we're willing to pay you. We want a nice relaxed day. I'm not saying I wouldn't do it, but in general, I say no to these gigs and consider it. Consider my advice if you're thinking of getting into it because it is an arduous task. So from Hugh Sweeney here in Renville, um, and I'd just like to say, <laughs> I'd not finished this video, I'd just like to say that the weddings I have done, I have only good things to say about the people I was involved with. They were so nice, so accommodating, so friendly, and I, I, I have great time for the people. So I'd just like to say that. So for myself, um, not that they're going to be watching this, <laughs> for myself, Hugh Sweeney in Renville here in Oranmore, about weddings. This is my first vidcast. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, until next time, until the next video, please subscribe for more videos like this. Uh, give us an old thumbs up if you liked the video. And feel free to check out my Facebook as well, Hugh Sweeney Filmmaker. My Facebook is my biggest thing. It's got the most interaction for some reason. So uh, check out Hugh Sweeney Filmmaker on Facebook and I'm on Instagram as well, but Instagram is I don't know, it's so fake, it's just, it's, you just can't see the point in it really, all these bullshit comments. Oh, wow, I love your content, bro. Check out mine, give me a follow. Anyway, for now, until the next video, it's over and out. Peace, bye.